Hello creepy friends and welcome to a new video. Today we'll be doing a button theme setup of my July bullet journal. Today we'll be changing up what I usually do in my bullet journal. I'm going to be using mostly washi tape to do this setup. And if you've watched my other videos, you might have seen that Originally, I was using my bullet journal to do a simpler and easier version of the same theme in my reading journal. And while I like the concept of that, being able to show you two different ways of doing the same theme, I think it's too repetitive and those videos weren't getting many views. So I decided to change it up and I will be doing different themes each month in my bullet journal and in my reading journal but I will still be keeping a different style in each journal. My reading journal will still be more heavily artistic using a lot of hand drawing techniques, whereas the bullet journal will still be a more simple version of how you can do journaling using more of these materials like washi tape, maybe some stickers every once in a while, things like that. And this bullet journal is a my more experimental journal. So you'll see here that I'm trying out waterfall tabs for the very first time. This is when you start at the beginning of all your pages and you cut slightly less off the page as you go back. And then you get this kind of cascading effect of all the pages. So you just saw me cutting off all the excess and now I'll be using washi tape to decorate the edges of each of these. And I'm alternating between a plain washi tape and a marble patterned washi tape. And I decided to use green and teal and light blue as my main colors. And then I'll also be using my favorite product, brown craft paper. If you like any of the products that you see me using in this video, they will all be linked in the description box below. I was trying to go with a different color theme than what I have been doing lately. I really have the urge to make everything warm colors all the time and only use like brown, pink, orange, yellow, those colors. So that's what I wanted to do originally with this, and I made myself make another choice just for a variety. However, at the end, I wished I had done it in pink and orange instead. I think that would have looked better, but you know, you gotta try different things sometimes. Here I'm just coming in with my other favorite product, my trusty corner cutter, and I'm just snipping off the edges of everything to make them rounded. For the July title, to make it stand out from everything else, I'm just using my gold acrylic paint pen to make it a little shimmery. And I'm using the same font that I used in my July reading journal, which is this typewriter style font. Moving on to doing the buttons, and this is the style of collage that I really enjoy doing. It's a little bit different than the usual collage style that you see in a lot of journaling setups. So I like to cut out everything, all the shapes that I need um, to make whatever picture I want to make, and then pasting them all together. Sort of like Eric Carle style. I don't know if you know the children's books by Eric Carle. He did the Very Hungry Caterpillar. Kind of that style of collage is what I enjoy doing. So here I've just cut out all the button shapes in the same washi tape and also in the brown craft paper. And I just really quickly want to say right here, thanks to my mom for giving me the idea for this theme. And I'm moving on here to make a little needle with the same gold paint pen. And then I will be doing a thread going through all the buttons. 
And after looking at some stock photos and Google searches of photos of button collections, I realized why don't I make some of the buttons different shapes? So I put a couple different shapes here, a star and kind of a scalloped one. I brought out my nemesis, the gel pen, to make all the button holes here. And it wouldn't have been feasible to cut little teeny tiny holes into all the paper to make the buttonholes, and I wanted them to be very visible so that you could easily tell these are buttons. So I just used the white gel pen to do this instead. To create some variation, I'm using a permanent Sharpie felt tip pen to make different patterns on these buttons. And I'm just copying some of the things that I saw in the reference photos of button collections. I'm not loving how this pen looks. I would have much preferred to have a fine nib pen to do these details. However, you cannot use ballpoint pen on washi tape. It won't dry and it'll just end up smudging. So I had to use the only permanent pen that I had. So in the future, I need to purchase some finer nibbed permanent pens. I switched back to my ballpoint pen to do the thread. And aesthetically, I really liked the idea of doing this dashed line for the thread. I think it looks really nice. It might not logically make a lot of sense to have it look like this, as if it's stitched, but I just like the way it looked, so that's what I did. And to finish up this title page, I just wanted to add one more stray button. And now we'll move on to all the waterfall tabs. The first one, the smallest surface area that I have, I decided to do my calendar and then a box at the bottom for a monthly task list where I can just jot things down that I generally need to do in the month of July. And I have another box at the bottom left where I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's there once I figure that out. To keep the theme going on these following pages, I'm using that same dashed line to outline all of my boxes on all of my spreads. And you'll see that I'm also tying in that brown craft paper, using it at the very top of the calendar as the area that I will write the initial for the day of the week. Flipping over now to the first weekly spread, 
You'll notice every time I flip one of these waterfall tabs over, I have slightly more surface area to work with. I really like these waterfall tabs. I think they look really interesting. And you only really have to do the fancy decoration part once in the beginning. And as you can see, I made sure my button design was vertical on the left side so that it peeks out correctly when you flip all these pages over. I wanted to make all the weeks slightly different. So you'll see weeks one and two have this eight horizontal box set up. And then weeks three and four will have vertical boxes. And for the numbers on week number one, I just put little circles of brown craft paper to write the date in. And then I'll just do the initial for the day of the week underneath that. I'm using the eighth box as my notes for the week, so you'll see I'm just using that same typewriter font. To change things up slightly for week two, I'm just using a marker that matches the color of my washi tape to put a little header at the top of each of the boxes for the days of the week, where I will write the number for the date and a shortened version of the name of the day. On week three, I'm switching to this vertical layout. And since I have a little more page real estate for weeks three and four, I'm able to do the vertical days of the week and also put some boxes at the bottom for some additional things. So on the left-hand page at the bottom, I'll have my box for notes. And then on the right side, I will have my checklist for all of my tasks that I need to do to make all my YouTube videos in July. And for the headers for these days of the week, I'm using a little strip of brown craft paper. Now for the last spread, I am going to try some new trackers that I've never tried before. Historically, I am terrible at filling out trackers, so we'll see how this goes. But I've always wanted to try a mood tracker, mostly because I just like how it looks. <laughs> but here on the right side of the page, I put a sleep tracker. I haven't been sleeping great lately and I've never been the best sleeper, so I'm going to try to track my sleep and see if I can improve things a little bit. I just have the date on the left hand side and then four, six, eight, and ten hours of sleep at the top. And I'll just do a very simple dot and line graph as the month goes on. Lastly, we have the mood tracker. I've seen some really intricate and complex ones that other people have done. I just wanted to try a pretty simple version of it. 
So I'm just going to do 31 little simple doodles of buttons at the bottom. And then I'll have three different colors in the key and I will fill each one in with the color relating to my general mood for that day. People like to use a mood tracker just to kind of see how they're doing, see if there's any trends, things like that. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you thought this video was relaxing and enjoyable, please like and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments if you like this new way of doing my bullet journal. I hope you'll join me next week. I'll be putting out a video every week in July, so it'll be a fun month. And next week I'll be doing a combination video of my June reading wrap up, and I'll also be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. The next week I will be doing a mid-year flip through of my reading journal so you'll be able to see everything I've done in my reading journal up until this point for 2024. Then I'll have my August reading journal and my August bullet journal videos. If you'd like more book review and journaling content, please join me over on all my social media accounts. My handle is always at biblio underscore creep and you can also check out my website bibliocreep.com. I hope summer is treating you well. Take care of yourself, drink your water, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.